thought that maybe we'd have some fun with this book when it was announced. I don't really know D.G. Chichester at all. There is mention of his run. The thing that worried me from the get-go, even before looking up things, is that this book, which is Daredevil Black Armor Number 1, all they kept mentioning was the Black Armor. Uh, Any sort of news, any sort of thing leading into this just kept mentioning the armor. And it started to worry me in the idea of, like, really? Like, you're really just pushing the idea of, hey, this is a cool costume, but yet the writer doesn't do that. It, It made me worried. And so when we jump into this, me and you both are not really familiar with DG. Chichester's run of Daredevil. No. It came out after the Innocenti stuff, which I hear a lot, and you actually were reading back in the day. So even when we went into this, you looked it up, and Chichester's run not really well received. It's not something that people seem to love a lot. No, it's not. So it makes you kind of scratch your head. Well, why are we doing this? And even when you get into this, the first thing that you do kind of deal with is this armor but not enough and i think that this book is a weird play of it's a back in the day kind of deal you're kind of going back to chichester's run and if you're not aware of what the lay of the land was and all that i think that you're going to be as confused as me and gray are as we try to get through this it took me a while to actually read this i'll spoil my whole play is i didn't really like it but it was more of the idea where i think i might be missing things not just the idea of oh my god it was terrible i just felt like i wasn't connected yeah i feel like you missed missed something huge or missed a a previous issue to this or something does this continue on straight off you know from his actual run it must must seems like it does yeah the characters look a bit weird too yeah and it's like a uh what they were doing with peter david's stuff i mean before we started we were talking about it and unfortunately peter david has had medical problems so is this kind of like hey we need some more of that back in the day stuff in the 90s nostalgia yeah, and Peter David's stuff was fun. It was. It was really good. It, this this isn't quite that, but it is Daredevil Black Armor, written by, number one, written by D.G. Chichester, pencils by Nitho Diaz, inks by J.P. Mayer, colors by Andrew Dollhouse and V.C.'s Clayton Coles on letters. And you do, again, you start out with the armor, but you kind of don't really get get any footing of what any of this means you don't really know until as you go forward and i can't even really put a pin on much of anything of what's happening with matt except the idea that he is you know kind of playing this role this idea jack this guy who's a grifter and he's there and he's and the things the little things that i did read and look up at one point in this chichester run matt thought that he was his father he ended up with all that stuff so as you go on you're just wondering like what the heck's going and happening and you have a spread page that shows a bunch of characters but nothing really to ease you in if you don't know about this if you're just new readers for this like me and gray you're gonna feel off by the end of the issue i thought to myself well Maybe we'll check out the next issue. Maybe it'll start making sense. Things will click and a light bulb will go off. I'm not so sure. Could but do. we kind of get through this that Matt is – Daredevil's looked at to be dead. This black armor Daredevil, yeah, they think he's like a replacement. It. Thinks that he's a replacement. So as you go on, and we're going to be very basic with the overall story again because I don't really get what might be – The kind of, you know, connective tissue because not reading the original run. Jim, on the spread page, just to point one thing, it it kind of freaked me out. Um, What's happened to Electra? Why has she got no hair? Yeah, she's there. She has that crazy look there. I'm not sure. Yeah, that was strange. So we've missed so much, haven't we? Yeah. Some people, you know, listening, maybe they're Chichester fans or they're more aware. Please don't get mad at us, you know, because we're beautiful, I'd like to say. But don't get mad at us again. (laughs) We're just jumping into this. This came out. I did a little bit of a background deal, but I'm trying to play it off or not even play it off. I going into this like some people would if they're just, you know, perusing the shelves at the comic. Oh, my God. that Because it does look cool. It does look cool. If you pick this up, Jim, randomly, like you said, you just went to a comic shop, picked it up. Great bit of dead of action. I think anyone would feel lost unless, you know, you've read his run and you remember it really well. 
Yeah, yeah, and, and fully. And even like the idea, like if you look at the Mark Bagley and Edgar Delgado cover, it even has like a, a little bit of a John Romita Jr. look. Like everything does, almost yeah. plays off as a, well, a classic kind of story from back in the day. So y- you might sit there and, oh man, that armor looks cool. What's this all about? And you go in, the problem is, again, you don't really let the reader know that. But the basic story is Matt, he's doing his thing. He's kind of playing undercover grifter type deal, living downtown in this place. You got a couple people that he's friends with. Doesn't look like he's really connected to his old friends and family. But as he goes, he ends up as Daredevil. He ends up stopping what appears to be like a you know a kidnapping or a human trafficking type deal you have some people that are rounding up some you know people in the streets and of course it's these people who are lower class they might be homeless whatever they're rounding them up because nobody would care about them and he jumps in to care about them then all of a sudden Sabretooth shows up and things get wacky it comes out of nowhere doesn't he yeah and it, it's it's cool i never thought that yeah, reading this i get Sabretooth and it looks no. really neat you get Matt doing his thing, okay, and, and a lot of people even recognizing, oh, my God, it's this new Daredevil. Oh, my God, what's going on? He even seems like he might be a little more violent, a little more. It's it's hard to tell, mm. but Sabretooth ends up skedaddling because he has an earpiece that says, okay, get out of there. Matt hears this, but in the meantime, he wants to try to figure out what the big giant plan is, and you do see at a point. Once you get to the end, the reveal at the end is uh, Baron Strucker and Hydra are involved in all this. You do see hints of that going. But again, by the end, I think that there was just too much going on and not enough, not recap, but ease people in. Yeah, that's it. Ease people in. Yeah. So as you go through this, Matt is thinking, you know, about his, his deal in his life and being a lawyer. So he's kind of playing, you know. I don't know, side alley lawyering. He's still going around and helping people who might need some legal help. It's okay. Did you get the impression, Jim, that he's like, he's taking on like so many different roles? I wasn't sure. Is he a, is he a lawyer or not? Maybe he is. Maybe isn't. Is he just remembering it in the past or? Yeah, it seems like he's like kind of like doing what he has to do. He's, he's being daredevil. You even have at a point where there's this neighbor, she's doing the tarot cards, things like that. Yeah. And yeah. she's kind of, Hey, I know what you're kind of up to. She seems to, you know, a bit more. But, yeah, he's just going and instead of being this high price lawyer or whatever. He's just going and giving people legal advice as he goes. And there's a nice scene at one point where he's talking to a guy who actually wants to be a lawyer, a big dude. And he says, my dad ended up like he kind of got arrested for robbery and the public defender really tried his hardest and got my dad off. And it inspired me. I want to be a lawyer. But nobody looks at me or takes me seriously. He mentions ADHD, but it's a nice enough scene. But in this, I feel like all the scenes end up just kind of being mashed together. Like you said, you even get the idea of like, is he playing too many roles? Is he going? And it might just be that it's mashed together because even at one point, talks to somebody and, hey, tell your lawyer, uh, lawyer, tell your landlord this. He can't evict you there. And then the landlord comes and is like, what are you doing giving advice? And Matt starts beating up people. It's, it, it's just there's too much thrown at you. Don't mess with the law, Jim. That's what he's saying, isn't it? <laughs> and in my mind here, like the idea that he's doing street lawyering, that's easy to comprehend because it's Matt. But yeah. it seems like he's uh, Chichester's concerned with showing you like that instead of Telling us more of what's happened with Matt, what's happened with Kingpin at this point. And the Kingpin's a big play in his run. So I get that Matt would do this sort of thing. You don't really have to focus that much on it. In the meantime, a bunch of people are missing. He's putting up, you know, missing signs. He's doing this whole street legal, free legal advice, Jack B. Like he's really setting this whole thing up. But again, it's a little too much. Then he goes and has a dinner with the tarot card reading gal. In, in the meantime, he, even, he mentioned earlier about, hey, I should kind of connect with some people around me. He starts thinking of electric, Karen, Foggy, those sort of things as well. But he's having this whole play. 
she's asking him why he's there. Everybody seems concerned. Why are you doing this missing stuff? Why are you doing this legal work? And he's like, well, people need it. Again, nothing that we wouldn't have figured out, but it's okay. There's nothing that's going to wow anybody in the writing, I think, here. Maybe people would enjoy the art. Even then, I think you should. Just should have had like a bunch of spread pages with the Black Arbor because that's really what you're playing. That's so. what you're here for, aren't you, Jim? I got, I got to say, I did enjoy a little bit of the uh, the tarot card storyline because we do get a bit more of that than any of the other storylines, don't we? So I was quite into that, and it sounds like Chichester he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, and and you have this girl, and it seems like there's a little romance going yeah. on. Yeah, so you worry because that'll probably lead to this girl having problems again. I don't know. If there's something from the past deal that might point to something else, but you end up where that's going on. And then in the meantime, Kingpin's getting a new car. He's going to up the ante. He's back. And Matt shows up at this kind of chop shop type of deal. And again, this scene, it's a weird play. Like you said, the tarot card scene, it's well written enough. But it's just kind of there. Then you shift over to now we have Kingpin. And you end up where. Yeah. And. It just feels like, again, these are just random scenes that were written separate and kind of thrown together. It didn't really have a flow. No, it didn't. The whole issue, it just seemed like disjointed. But the end up where Kingpin gets this car, Matt, as Daredevil in the black armor, which you have Kingpin think this is the new Daredevil, even says, the old guy, me and the old Daredevil, we had a bit of a back and forth, but we respected this and that and the other thing. But the big thing here is who is kidnapping people? Why are they human? Tra- and it doesn't seem like it is a kingpin thing, but he knows some stuff about it. I just feel bad for these people. It's weird, too, because he has this car and this guy's there. Hey, I got you this car. You're going to drive around like the kingpin again. Daredevil shows up and he's like, hey, I don't like you in this car. It's weird. The guy starts yelling that it's, hey, we didn't steal it. I have paperwork. Yeah, like, it's okay. official. Yeah, he's like, it's official. And then Matt just destroys it by dropping an engine block on it that just completely destroys the car. And then you get on the side, these guys, one guy says, sucks to be you, fats. That, he shouldn't have said that, should he, Jamie? He, he was like a red rag to a bull. Exactly. So when this ends, this made me laugh. Matt legitimately, if we can go with the play that this guy actually did legally buy this car for Kingpin, Matt's destroyed their property, right? Then he leaves and you really see Kingpin kills probably everybody in there while Matt just zips away. He he actually set up the murder of a bunch he of did. people. They don't show it, do they? You just get like blood splattering on the auto and that's part a side. Lot of blood that's splattering a lot of blood on the on the deal. I'm like, holy <laughs> moly! And he says, "I want respect." I mean, you can't sit there as Matt leaves. I'm sure, and even then, Matt says, "Listen, you want to be a real New Yorker? Why don't you get around like it? Go to the subway." So even the one guy. Says, want to borrow my Metro card for the subway? <laughs> <laughs> They're all dead. This one guy, the poor guy, it seems like he's just like, okay, uh, Kingpin wants me to buy him a car. I'm going to, hey, here you go. I There's got the nobody paperwork. nobody taking the subway tonight, man. No, no, no. They're all dead. Taking the, the subway to hell. Oh, See, no. you end up at the end, I'm like, you, you just legitimately set up the murder of a bunch of people. And yeah. he goes off, and you do get, you know, kind of that over the old narration in the head of Matt. It, it's very, I mean, I hate to say it, but it's its that Batman, dare to, it's that whole play of, you know, this is my city and I'm going to do this. It's a little over the top. But then at the end, then if all this is crazy, then at the end you see that who appears to be involved with all this and this whole kidnapping things, it's Hydra. Baron Strucker, I'm like, all right, this is wacky. Okay. And he's underground as well, isn't he, Jim? He's yeah, underground the yeah whole time. and I'm like, all right, I didn't really get eased into anything here. No. Nope. I don't really know what's going on, but then you see, and I think what we're going to do, it, is it a greatest hits? I don't know if you could call it that, but in the next issue, I'm like, all right, there's Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin on the cover. Yeah, save it with that. You know what I mean? I'm like, maybe this is going to be that wacky book that has a bunch of guest stars like that, but the problem is that sounds like fun. 
this wasn't really that much fun. It made me laugh when guys got killed just because Matt wanted to prove a point of some sort and drop an engine block on a legal car. I, it just was weird, but the art's pretty good. But what would you give this? It's a weird book, right? It is a weird book. Like you say, it, it lacks the fun, unfortunately. It's not terrible, but it was just kind of like, okay. Although my favorite line has to be that guy saying, sucks to be you to King, <laughs> King Fear. Like, Facts. what an idiot, you know, what are yeah, you doing? Why would you say that? There's no reason. Uh, it's tough to score, though. What would be your score? It is tough to score. I'm going to go, I'm going to be a little bit generous. I'm going to give it a 6.5 yeah, out a, of 10. I'm a 6. I'm a just okay. a 6. I like the art, Jim. Do you? That's what gave it a little bit extra point for that. And it actually has a pencil and an inker for a change. That's pretty yeah, it's rare. it's crazy, right? I mean, it, yeah. it looks, I actually think that someone like Sully probably enjoy the art here. I don't oh, know yeah. if you like the story, but probably enjoy the art. And there's going to be some people who are like, oh my God, Chichester, at least remember the run. Maybe oh, yeah. not be a huge fan, but even if I remembered the stuff, I think we would have gotten a little more out of it. But coming in cold like this, it, w- it was tough. You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution.